Hey team, in this video we're going to look at the 10 different ways you can make money growing mushrooms. Before we kick off, here's a quick message from our sponsors. Are you sick of not having shoes? Does not having shoes hurt your feet? Are you always walking on jagged terrain? Introducing shiitake shoes. Utilising spent shiitake blocks and organic plastic rope made with 100% pure petroleum byproducts. Walk for metres in this comfortable footwear. Live life. Live experiences. Live shiitake shoes. I love my shiitake shoes. Available now at any decent mushroom farm. If you guys enjoy my YouTube channel, head on over to my Patreon and check that out as well. Also like and subscribe and hit that little bell button so you can see my content as I release it. Small scale mushroom farms have been popping up in any reasonably sized city around the world. I believe these are popping up because you can grow a meaningful quantity of mushrooms in a small space, the information about growing is readily available on the internet, and people are finding interesting ways to monetize mushroom growing. Growing mushrooms for profit can be a part time endeavor or a full scale operation. So there's 10 ways to make money growing and selling mushrooms? Yes. Maybe not specifically growing and selling mushrooms, but 10 different ways to make money within the boutique mushroom growing community. I believe the key to becoming successful with a small scale mushroom farm is to pick two or more of these methods. You don't want to pick too many because you'll stretch yourself too thin, especially if you are operating a one man operation like me. If you look at other small scale mushroom farms around the world, you can actually pick out the methods we've covered in this video that they are using to make money. Right, now that we have the intro covered off, let's start out with method number one. Method number one is pretty straightforward, and that is growing edible mushrooms. Without much space at all, it is easy to start producing a meaningful quantity of mushrooms. You only need 5 kgs at a small market, and you can walk away with $200. Once you get the knack of growing these delicious treats, you can move to target restaurants and finally supermarkets. With the latter two, you have to make sure your production is consistent and of a high quality. Method number two. Now method number two involves using freshly grown mushrooms to produce a secondary item, being a mushroom jerky, maybe a mushroom powder, or perhaps delicious mushroom chips. Now there's one company in New Zealand which does this really well, and they are called Mushroom House. And they produce these delicious mushroom chips. These mushroom chips are sold locally in our supermarkets here in New Zealand. What's great about a product like these mushroom chips is their shelf life is a lot longer than uh, traditional fresh mushrooms, of which you'd have to sell in a week. Um, these can last for weeks, potentially months, on the shelf. Another great thing about companies like Mushroom House is they often purchase fresh mushrooms from local growers. These mushroom chips here were a finalist in the New Zealand Food Awards, so they are pretty damn good. In fact, I might just... Number three. Now, number three on our list is to make and sell mushroom grow kits. There's already a few stores online which do this, and you can find grow kits uh, all over Amazon. Now, if you set up a small facility to produce blocks that are inoculated with mushroom mycelium. To make mushroom grow kits, all you need to do is get these blocks into a box and get them on the shelves. The only problem you have is that the, the bags of uh, inoculated substrate will want to start fruiting pretty quickly, and they might start fruiting on the shelves in store. So they often don't have a long shelf life. But the good thing about mushroom grow kits is that people who haven't grown mushrooms before can easily buy one and start growing. We've got a few links in the description down below of some of the different types of mushroom grow kits that you can pick up. Number four. Number four is starting a mushroom culture bank. If you start a small mushroom farm, you're most likely going to maintain your own bank of cultures. Now it's not too difficult to offer these cultures for sale online. You'll see a lot of small mushroom farms doing this. Although it's not going to make you a million dollars very quickly, it does supplement your mushroom farm income. Number five is selling spawn online. No, I'm not talking about the big dude with chains. I'm talking about the stuff you use to start growing mushrooms. Here at Oaken Sport, we sell some spawn online, and it maybe makes up 10 
to 15% of our sales. If you're producing your own spawn and growing your own mushrooms with it, it's not a lot harder to put in a few extra bags each week and offer these for sale. One of the difficulties with selling spawn online is contamination. And if you're prone to getting a lot of contamination, then you probably shouldn't be selling spawn. Number six. What we have at number six is producing and selling medicinal mushroom products. There are quite a few companies around that do this already and they do it to a really high standard. Here in New Zealand, we can't really do that unfortunately. A lot of mushroom varieties which are present in the likes of North America are not actually present in New Zealand. And our Ministry of Primary Industries, who control the border here, won't allow them into the country. But if you can grow quality medicinal mushrooms and you can package them really nicely, no doubt you'll be able to get some sales. Coming in at number seven, we have selling mushroom growing supplies. Supplies can be anything from mushroom growing bags, petri dishes, agar, anything a mushroom grower is going to use on a daily and weekly basis, you can sell and provide. Unfortunately, it's tricky to compete with the likes of Amazon, but you might be able to find your little niche. So we are down to the final three team. Now these last three are quite challenging and I don't recommend you going into them unless you have a, a good base of prior knowledge. So we're up to number eight. Now number eight is designing and manufacturing high quality mushroom growing equipment. Now Eric Myers from Myers Mushrooms does this. For example, a brilliant piece he's made is an automated mushroom bagger. Now this bagger should be able to cut your bagging time down by an order of magnitude and it's an incredibly great asset to have. Designing and selling equipment like this, although very challenging, could be very rewarding. Number nine. Now number nine is done by a few companies out there, and number nine is offer mushroom growing courses. A lot of people are screaming for the knowledge on how to grow mushrooms. And there are a few people out there which have a knowledge scope wide enough that they can offer that information to the public. And to do that, they have mushroom courses. So they will take a small fee from a student and the student will come along and will learn with them over the course of one, perhaps two, perhaps three nights, perhaps a whole week. But that teacher can impart his knowledge down to the student. To do this though, you must have an incredibly high base of knowledge. And it's recommended you establish yourself within the mushroom growing industry for a number of years prior. And finally, number 10. Can any of you guys guess what it is? It's actually what you're watching right now. Start a YouTube channel. But to be honest, I don't recommend it. I have been working on my YouTube channel for over a year now, and it's still not at the point where I can monetize. It's a lot of effort, and it's a lot of hard work, and you don't often see much reward for it for months and months and months. But if you're dedicated and you're really keen, I recommend getting a YouTube channel fired up. At least just show the world what you do because people do enjoy watching it.